Today we're talking about the 5 best budget gaming graphics cards in late 2020. So I noticed that a lot of you guys are interested in gaming and streaming. I mean, most of you guys have found my channel from my how to stream with low internet video or the how to stream with a low end PC tutorial. Which brings us to the next thing I've noticed, which is that most of you guys are on a budget. This is why I decided to make a list of the 5 best budget gaming graphics cards that you could buy and use for gaming and streaming in late 2020. With that being said, I do have a quick disclaimer. This list is based on my personal experience with some of these cards and hours, literally hours of research. I do not own all of these cards, okay, I'm not lying as tech tips. The benchmark numbers I'll be talking about are, are from some of my friends who do own these cards. I do apologize for not having the gameplay footage of the benchmarks because some of you guys may already know, my internet sucks and transferring hours of footage from my friends would take forever, so instead I'll just be talking about the numbers. Okay, with that disclaimer out of the way, go ahead and finesse that like button and let's get right into the video. Alright, the games I chose to benchmarks are by no means the most demanding, instead they are the most popular according to Twitch viewership. This listing is going to be from the least powerful card to the most powerful in my opinion. Okay, the first budget gaming graphics cards we're going to be talking about in this listing today is the Nvidia GTX 1050 Ti. Dude, I do own this very same card and it has not been at all disappointing. I mean, it has 4 gigs of VRAM, a base clock of 1341 MHz and a boost clock in the 1600s. With an overclock you can easily get it in the high 1900s depending on which model you have. A really good thing that I like about this card is that it doesn't require a 6 min connector so it's not power hungry which means if you have a 300 watts power supply you can absolutely use it and you will not need to upgrade it. This card only runs on the PCI Express provided 75 watts. In games it does pretty well, in Volorant you can do 1080p max settings and still get a around 170 frames per second on average. GTA 5 1080p very high settings, it held an average frame rate in the high 70s with some dips in the mid 60s and explosions. Now in Fortnite, we have it on epic settings 1080p it did pretty well as well, holding exactly 70 frames on average without any major drops. And last but not least we have Call of Duty Warzone. On low settings 1080p we did 60 frames on average with 1% lows in the low 50s. You can expect to grab one of these bad boys, the GTX 1050 Ti 4GB for around $160 brand new. I will leave my affiliate links in the description down below if you're interested. If you go ahead and buy it through my link that will help the channel. But now moving on to the second card on the listing which is the GTX 1650. This card has 4 gigs of VRAM, a base clock of 1530 MHz and a boost clock of 1620 MHz. I have seen people overclock this bad boy all the way up to 20-25 MHz. Just like the previous one, this one does not require a 6 pin connector which is in my opinion absolutely amazing for the amount of power it's generating. Now this card obviously costs $160 as well, brand new, it performs pretty amazing in games as well. With GTA 5, very high settings doing 80 frames on average with dips to high 70s in explosions. We also have Warzone doing 69 frames on average on 1080p low settings. Fortnite doing epic settings 1080p. We have exactly 60 frames on average without any major drops. And Volorant we are doing 180 frames 1080p max settings and an impressive drop to 120 frames when there's a lot of action on the screen. Okay, the third and final Nvidia card in today's listing is gonna be, drumroll please, the NVIDIA GTX 1650 Super. The Super Edition is an improved card over its predecessor, the normal 1650. But unlike the normal 1650, this bad boy actually is power hungry, which means you're gonna need a 6 pin connector and a power supply that delivers at least 400 watts of power to your system. It costs just around $170 brand new and it delivers a base clock of 1530 MHz and a boost clock up to 17 25. Overclocked you can easily reach 20-55 MHz, I've seen people reach those numbers. And all of these extra powers and dollars are gonna be putting into this card are definitely gonna be worth it because in Warzone we did 1080p high settings this time and maintained 71 frames on average with 1% lows at 54 frames. On low settings you can expect to get around 109 frames on average with 1% lows of 71 frames which is an absolutely amazing performance for a card that costs just around $170. GTA 5 did very high settings 1080p and maintained a stable 70 frames on average. Fortnite on epic settings 1080p did 78 frames on average 
and in low settings it did way above 200 frames. This card also blew Valorant out of the water with 203 frames on average with 1% lows of 139 frames. Keep in mind this is 1080p, the highest settings possible. Again, the link for this bad boy will be in the description down below. Alright, moving on to the first AMD card on our list and we have the RX 578GB edition. You can get this bad boy for just around $160 and for the 4GB edition you can get this bad boy for around $120 both brand new. Base clock for this bad boy is 1256 MHz and it does require an external power 6 pin connector and a 400 watts power supply minimum. In games it performs like a boss with 75 frames on average and 1% loads of 61 frames in Warzone on high settings 1080p. On low settings you can expect to reach the high 90s figures on average. Now GTA 5 is another game that did pretty well on this card, averaging a whopping 100 frames with drops at the high 80s and the explosions. And keep in mind, this is on 1080p with very high to ultra settings. Fortnite on low settings 1080p did 214 frames on average with, with 142 frames as 1% lows. On epic settings it averaged around 64 frames with 1% lows of 51 frames. This card actually blew Valorant out of proportions with a whopping 209 frames on average. I'll be leaving links for both the 8 gigabits and the 4 gigabits edition in the description down below and it is important to keep in mind that the benchmarks I mentioned are for the 8 gigabits edition. Alright, right even at the last most powerful card on our list in today, we have the RX 580 from AMD. This bad boy costs just around $180 brand new, it has a boost clock of 1340 MHz, 8 gigs of VRAM and just like the 570 this one needs a 6 pin connector. But unlike the previous one, this one actually consumes more power so, so this one actually consumes 185 watts so you're gonna need at least a 500 watts power supply to run this card on your system comfortably. And all of this combined actually gives us the perfect budget beast. Doing high settings in Warzone averaging 83 frames with 1% loads of 68 frames on 1080p. GTA 5 on 1080p very high to ultra settings doing 109 frames on average with 92 frames as 1% lows. Absolutely amazing performance. Valorant did amazing as well, 215 frames on average with 1% lows of 160 frames so you can absolutely game Valorant 144Hz refresh rate with no problems. And last but not least you have Fortnite doing 70 frames on average on epic settings with 1% lows in the high 50s. This ladies and gentlemen is my list for the 5 best budget gaming graphics cards that you can buy in late 2020. My goal with this video is to help you decide which card you should get, I hope my hours of research condensed into these key points in this video video made your decision a little bit easier. If this video helped you, please be sure to leave a like, also hit that subscribe button as I'm on my way to 4,000 subscribers and all help is appreciated. And with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.